You're welcome once again to Chosen Generation TV. Wow, to God alone be all the glory. It's the beginning of a new day. The Word of God says, This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I do not know about you today, but get excited that you're in the land of the living and there's so much to be grateful for. And so I want to say thank you to all those of you who help to share this good news with us, with your friends, with your loved ones. And if you have not done that yet, I encourage you to do so. Let's say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for our time in your presence. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will speak through my vocal cords. I pray that this word will come with power and effect in the name of Jesus. That the life of sin, the life of reproach will be destroyed forever. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord God. I know you always hear me when I pray. And I give you thanks and praise that this word will rejuvenate your children, will make them realize how much you love them unconditionally. In Jesus' name, amen. And so you're welcome once again to Chosen Generation TV. And today we shall be talking about nothing else but the Word of God. And I have a very interesting topic. If you haven't been through it, I know you know somebody that has been through it. But I want to say, I would doubt it that you haven't been through it, through the scenario before. Almost each and every one of us, including myself, has been through this. And what are we talking about? We're talking about guilt. We're talking about shame. Are you that person right now you just sit back and you're like i don't want to talk to nobody right now because you know i'm ashamed of myself i know what i did in the past and because of what i've done in the past i don't think people will love me anymore i don't think anybody will receive me anymore oh my goodness i have a word from the word of god today jesus himself speaking about shame and guilt you know saint paul who did so much who rebelled against the church, who destroyed the, the Christians in the early time. But guess what? When God turned him around, there's hardly any day none of us talks about him wherever we are in the world when we read the scriptures, when God turned his story around. And because God turned his story around, he's also going to turn your story around today in the name of Jesus. So let's look at what Jesus said in John chapter 8. John chapter 8, Jesus was speaking concerning the story that we all know. And I pray right now that divine revelation will be given to you as you listen to me carefully about the story one more time. Because the word of God, according to Romans 10, 17, it says faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing. And I say faith cometh by hearing, understanding and being in obedience to the word of God. So you got to be obedient to the word of God and forget about your shame and forget about your guilt. Because what I see, the reason why a lot of people are depressed, a reason why a lot of people are stressed besides money and other things is simply shame. They're ashamed of what they have done in the past. I want to free you from that shame today through the word of God that you forget about everything you've ever done. Amen. And so in John chapter 8, beginning, I will start from verse 3. It says, And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him, who is him? Jesus. Take a woman, brought unto him a woman, taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, Master, they called Jesus Master. And they said, the woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says they? You see, they were trying to get Jesus into a corner. Like most people will always do. Some people will come with some arguments and you're like, what? where did you get that from? But you know, people will argue for whatever they care about. I encourage you, don't bother arguing. Go into the word of God. If it's something concerning the scriptures, find it out. Google it. You will find the result. Amen. And so they came and they told Jesus, Moses said, such a woman should be stoned. But my first question is, 
It's not about gender right now. There were two people. Where was the other person? Amen. But she was the only one that was brought forth. And they asked that question. Moses said, we should stone. Then they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus took down. Wow. Jesus, the wise man, he stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. Only God knows what he was writing. He was writing on the ground. To me, deep revelations. And so he was writing with his finger and acted as though he did not hear. So when the continued asking, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Question for you. Are you without sin? You've never sinned? Cast your stone. You continue to shame people? Cast your stone. And Jesus asked that question. And I ask you that question because a lot of you keep on pointing fingers at people. Keep on saying, she did, he did, that person did. What have you done that nobody knows? What did you do in secret? Jesus knows. The Lord knows what you did. And so Jesus asked that question. And again, he stooped down and rolled on the ground. And they which heard, being convicted, hear this word. This is what the Holy Spirit does for you and I today. He will convict you of your sin. We always say we live in the, under the grace of God. But he will convict you of your sin. Amen. But you don't have to remain in shame and guilt. And what did Jesus say? When Jesus rose up, he looked around. Amen. And in verse 9, he said they were convicted of their sin. And he looked at her, she was all alone in the midst standing. He asked in verse 10, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are those your accusers? Had no man condemned thee? Where are they? Because they also had their own sin. She said, no man. Lord, and Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. My brothers and sisters, go and sin no more. Can we do this in our strength? The answer is no. But can we do it because of Christ? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. In 2 Corinthians 5 17, what does that scripture tell us? Simply referring to us to forget about the old man. We have been made new. And in verse 21, you have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus has paid the ultimate price. You have become the righteousness. So I want you to know God's will for you is not shame. God's will for you is not for you to feel bad. God's will for you is not for you to beat up yourself. Enough of beating up yourself. Enough of being depressed. Get up. Wash up yourself. Sin no more. Repent of your sin. And get your t-shirt on. Put on a smile. Give God thanks. Because it's the dawn of a new day in your life and my life in the name of Jesus. When I got over all that I'd done in the past, oh my goodness, I became a brand new creature. And so can you today. And what is the will of God? God wants you to be set free. When we take a look at the word of God, I would look at one other scripture, two other scriptures that I want us to look at. In Romans 12, Romans 12 verse, verses 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God's will for you is to live free from sin. God's will for you is to repent of your sin, just the way he said to that lady. Don't be bothered by no shame, no guilt. Throw it out because of the name J-E-S-U-S. -S. And you say to me right now, how do I do that? Verse 3 says, For I say, 
I say through the grace given unto you, unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to how God has dealt to every man the same measure of faith. You have the same measure of faith. Amen. Think about what God has done for you. Don't think of yourself more highly. And then as I wrap up today, I want to encourage you there is a name above every other name because you know the will of God, that perfect will of God, because you are not conformed to this world. You have renewed your mind with the word of God. What else do you do? You have become the righteousness of God. And if you look at the scripture in Ephesians 2, Philippians 2, rather, Philippians 2, verses 9 and 10. Philippians 2, verses 9 and 10. Wherefore God has exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. Because you need a name to be able to overcome. And what is that name? That is at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every sin will bow. Amen. And the things in heaven and the things in earth and the things underneath the earth everything everything don't bother about somebody else bother about yourself and in verse 12 of that scripture what does he say he says wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only saint paul is saying not only in the presence of the man of god not only in the presence of people in church or wherever you are but also in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God's will, it, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. Do all things. I encourage you to do all things. In Ephesians um, 5 verse 17, you will understand God's will. God's will is for you not to sin anymore. God's will is for you to live in righteousness. God's will is for you to walk in boldness. He tells us in Hebrews 4 verse 16, he said, Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy. Find help in time of need. Come to the throne of grace. God says it is finished. It is done. No more fear of, of failure. No more fear of guilt. Put an end to depression. Let us win the war because you have the same measure of faith. And so if you're that person, you haven't received Jesus yet as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to re repeat after me. I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus died upon the cross of Calvary. He rose again. And on the third day, he ascended into heaven. And he's seated at a righteous, uh, the right hand of God. And because of that, you have been freed from all. And so if you have just repented, I want you to get into a Bible-believing church. Believe in the word of God and you shall be saved and delivered from every trial, every peril in the name of Jesus. We we'll love you. Visit us on our webpage and share the good news. We want every single soul on earth. My prayer, my wish and I pray that you join me today is to see every sinner come into the kingdom of God and receive the righteousness of Christ Jesus. It is free. It is for you and it's for me. We we'll love you. Jesus loves you more. Have a great one. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace.